Now, folks, I don't know what you did last night, but I spent 90, stage, 90 minutes on a stage debating a guy who has the morals of an alley cat. <laughs> did you see Trump last night? My guess, he said, I mean it sincerely, a new record for the most lies told in a single debate. He lied about the great economy he created. He lied about the pandemic he botched, killing millions of people. He closed businesses. He closed schools, losing their homes, people all over this country. America was flat on its back. So I told Trump that he was just one of two presidents of American history who left office with fewer jobs than he started. Herbert Hoover was the other one. That's why I call him Donald Herbert Hoover Trump. And then he lied about how great he was for veterans. But then I told him how he had called a veteran and given their lives in the country in World War I and refused to go to the grave sites. He called them suckers and losers. He tried to deny it. But let me ask you, are you going to believe a four-star Marine general, his own former chief of staff, John Kelly, who said he said that, or the disgrace defeated a lying Donald Trump? My son was one of those people, not a war woman in the V. Folks, look, how about the fact that 44, 44 top advisors, including the vice president, aren't supporting him this time around. The people who know him best, 40 of them, said, I will not support the man I work for this time around. It tells you a lot about the person who knows him. Look, he lied about how great he was on crime. I had to remind him that he oversaw a record increase in murder rates in 2020. On my watch, violent crime has hit a 50-year low. There's more to do than 50-year low. And then I pointed out that the only convicted criminal on the stage last night was Donald Trump. <laughs> when I thought about his 34 felony convictions, his sexual assault on a woman in a public place, his being fined $400 million for business fraud, I thought to myself, Donald Trump isn't just a convicted felon. Donald Trump is a one-man crime wave. He's got more trials. He's got more trials coming up. Time for that. Look, the thing that bothers me maybe most about him, he has no respect for women or the law. He doesn't. And then his biggest lie. He lied about how he had nothing to do with the insurrection of January 6th. We all saw with our own eyes. We watched it on television. We saw thousands in his direction attack the Capitol. We saw police being attacked, the Capitol being ransacked, the mob hunting for Speaker Pelosi, gallows literally set up for Mike Pence. And then, he told them as he sat in the dining room, one, one, the private dining room, one door off my Oval Office. He sat there for three hours watching the TV. He did not a single thing to stop it. Nothing. Nothing at all. And now, and now he wants to pardon all those convicted and criminal. But folks, for all his lies, we did lump some, we learned some important truths about Donald Trump last night. We learn he's still proud of being the person who killed Roe v. Wade. We learn, <clears throat> no, <clears throat> we learn he's still proud about the pain and cruelties inflicted on America's women. We learn he still believes that politicians, not doctors and women, should make decisions about the woman's health. We learn that if he's elected again and the MAGA Republicans pass a national ban on abortion, he will sign it. 
Donald Trump says he thinks Roe v. Wade, overturning Roe v. Wade was a beautiful thing. I think it was a nightmare. No, I really mean it, a nightmare. And I made it clear again last night that if you elect me and Kamala, you give us a democratic commerce, we will make Roe v. Wade the law of the land again. He continued to lie. He said, I quadruple taxes. <laughs> Where the hell has he been? <laughs> Which is a simple lie. I didn't raise a tax on anyone in America who they made less than $400,000 a year. Right. And I won't in my second term either. We learned that Trump, who had the largest deficit in any president in four years because of the $2 trillion tax cut to the super wealthy, we learned that Trump wants to give another giant tax cut for the very wealthy and the biggest corporations. This time, $5 trillion, not a joke, $5 trillion to pay for it. He's going to cut Medicare and Social Security. He'll cut health care. He'll do it all with millions of working and middle class Americans all pay for another tax cut for the very wealthy. Then, to add insult to injury, he wants to raise taxes on the average family 2500 a year. What amounts to a new 10 percent tail tax on all products imported in America, that's his new plan, for food, coffee, candy bars, and so much more. It's going to raise the tax on the average family $2,500 a year. And most dangerously, though, we learned that Donald Trump will not respect this year's election outcome. He's still not rejecting the last time out. Now, well, think about it. Every court in Hernan ruled that it was a fair election. He's still denying it, still telling lies. Three times Trump was asked last night by the moderators, would he respect the election results if he lost this time? Three times he refused to answer. Three times. Folks, Donald Trump refused to accept the results in 2020. We all saw what happened on January the 6th. It's a direct consequence of that. It was an international embarrassment. By the way, as I go to these international meetings, I know every major world leader, and I, and I literally, because I've been around, as you might have noticed. <laughs> but they asked me, did he really mean this? Is that, was this real? It caused the constitutional crisis and international embarrassment. Now, Trump is making it clear that if he doesn't win this time, there will be, in his words, bloodshed. Was no president has ever said anything like that. No president. His words, not mine. We're going to let Donald Trump attack our democracy again? I don't think so. <laughs> Folks. We've come a long way from the mess that Donald Trump left us. We came out of the pandemic. We're a long way from where Donald Trump telling us to inject bleach in our skin, that COVID is not that dangerous. <laughs> Today, we have the strongest economy in the world without exception. 15 million new jobs. 800,000 manufacturing jobs. Unemployment under 4% for a record two years in a row. Historic black and Hispanic unemployment down. Historic creation of small businesses in black and all communities across the nation, particularly in rural areas. Historic economic growth. Inflation has dropped from 9% to 3 and is still going down. I know we have more to do to get prices down. We have to take on corporate greed. They're making twice the profit they were before the pandemic. We got to make housing more affordable, yeah. provide child care, yeah. make the tax code fair. Yeah. 16 Nobel winners of the economic Nobel Prize have looked at my economy, economic plan this week. They've issued a report and a Trump's plan. Here's what they concluded. 
They said that my plan would continue to grow the economy and bring down inflation. 16 Nobel laureates. And that Trump's plan would send the nation into recession and inflation soaring through the roof. But don't take my word for it. Folks, let me close with this. I know I'm not a young man. State the obvious. Well, I know. speak as smoothly as I used to. I don't deb debate as well as I used to. But I know what I do know. I know how to tell the truth. I know. I know. I know right from wrong. <laughs> and I know how to do this job. I know how to get things done. And I know like millions of Americans know, when you get knocked down, you get back up. I know what it took to take our economy in the depths of pandemic to where it is today, the strongest economy in the world. I know what it'll take to bring this economy to everybody. I know it'll take to rally the world to stand up against Putin and defend freedom, not yield to him. And I know it'll take to keep the world safe and free for the years ahead. Folks, I give you my words of Biden. I would not be running again if I didn't believe with all my heart and soul I can do this job. Because quite frankly, the stakes are too high. The stakes are too high. Trump is a genuine threat to this nation. He's a threat to our freedom. He's a threat to our democracy. He's literally a threat for everything America stands for. Look, he doesn't understand what I think all of you do. America is the finest, the most unique nation in the world. We're the only nation in the world, and I mean this sincerely, it's a fact statement, not a hyper hyperbolic statement, it's fact. We're the only nation in the world built on an idea. All the nations are built on ethnicity, geography, and other religion. But we're built on an idea that we're all created equal. We deserve to be treated equally throughout our lives. We've never fully lived up, and I'll be damned in the year 2024, just two years. Just two years before the 250th anniversary of our Declaration of Independence, that I'll let Donald Trump walk away from it.